We are at Simple Elegance Rock Shop in Orem, and this is Ben. Ben, tell us what you're going to be showing us today. Okay, so we're going to be showing uh, how to cut a rock by hand so that you don't lose your fingertips, and how to do it on a stick in two different methods. One on a stick with a dopping wax, and one on a stick with a super glue method. So we have an alcohol lamp, a sterno can, a candle, or an electric dot pot. Make sure you turn electric dot pots off. People tend not to forget they've left a candle running. So we get a stick. We attach some glue to it. We put this black side down because we're going to do the back first. We get our glue. We get a good glob of glue. It takes a little bit to heat this. People will put it in a tuna fish can or lid and stick it on top and just let it heat till it's soft. Get it soft before you put your stone on so it doesn't sit there and overheat the stone. This wax will leave a blister if it gets on your skin while it's super hot. We get the counter wet. We heat the wax up. We roll it in here to center it on the stick. If you have to handle hot wax, Make sure you get your fingers wet. Now we want to make sure our wax is, our stone is hot enough to take the wax. So we put a little chip on there. And when it's melted, we can glue this to the stone. So we have our stone. This is almost cool enough. I can put my hand on it, but I have to take it away. So I've got to wait for it to cool and make sure it doesn't shift on me. We want this to be level as you spin it around so it's not like a bad record. So that it's centered on the stick. Some rocks are more heat sensitive than other ones. This one's fairly good. It's a little more than lukewarm, so I'm just going to cool it. We do basically the same thing, but we only do the back all the way through. The longer the streak, the better. Try to stick to one area on your wheel, a line across, so that you're not going up and down the wheel like this. You want a nice crisp line. Better go four or five times around it to get it perfect than to do it once. So now we have something right up to the line, touching it maybe into it, it's fine. Because we're going to leave a little of this extra all the way around.
close, but there is always just a little rim of this edge all the way around there. This means it doesn't go through our stencil. Just short of going through. We move to the next wheel. We hold it straight on. We spin it in place. If you see any black marker left, you probably have low spots. Make sure you get all those scratches out. Don't go up and down the wheel. Just hold it across in one spot. Look at one side where it's contacting, so not, not touching here or here, only touching across that center line. Still have a little low spot. Do the whole rock, not just the low spot. We want this so flat it'll hold onto the wall. If it's really bad, you can take some out here, then come back and make sure you get rid of all the grit marks you just created. It's a hard rock, it'll take a minute. So now we have something very little right here at the edge. We'll live with that. We just move on. Don't push hard. If you push hard, we'll only do the outside edge and miss the center. Try to use your whole wheel, not just the one area. If your water adjusts position, I try not to use the center of my wheel because beginners tend to use that up. So now we have smooth. There's no scratches, there's no divots. We have to dry it off to see that. We move to the next wheel. If your wheel develops a chip in it, and you can't return it, and you need to use it. You can put a little super glue and baking powder on there, smooth it out, and it will keep it from chipping more. So just fill it in and wear off. It'll take about 20 times or more around for a rock this size. I have a little streak here, two pits here, and a little pitting there. If your pits are too bad, fill them with a little super glue, let them set up, or fill them with uh, powdered rock, charcoal dust, pyrite, something, and then sand them, and that'll fill in even larger gaps. If you're pushing too hard, it will miss the center. This is what it should look like. Smooth, no scratches. These are sweep lines from my finger, so this is smooth enough. Look at the reflection. This one, you can see the little gold wires in here. Nice. Just keep moving down the line. It takes 25 to 40 turns for a hard rock on any of these wheels. If you get very good at it, you can tell just when you're ready by looking at it. If you have to, you can go off the edge to speed it up, but you have to get rid of the lines that that creates. Each one makes it just slightly smoother, slightly shinier. So we have 20 turns on each of those. We turn our speed down so our polishing wheel is moving at a slower speed 
and not creating too much friction. We get our leather nice and soaking wet. You can add diamond paste if you like. We get aluminum oxide or cerium oxide. Now if it's not sticky enough, add a little powdered sugar. Be aware bees are attracted to powdered sugar. So if you're out in the garage, you might want to find something else that's sticky. Put a little on there, that's plenty. We drag into the spin, turn the rock and do that. If it gets tacky, get it wet. Don't stand where you're going to get flicked in the face. <laughs> Polishing compounds are not good for our body any more than rock dust. Some rock dust is more toxic than others. Things like malachite, nazurite, if it's turning your skin to colors, for heaven's sakes, wear gloves, if not a dust mask. Things like jade, serpentine, tiger eye all have asbestos in them. Horn and bone have it, little cryolite fibers and little microbes you have to bake or let dry for six months to kill. Then we come over to this one and we just hit it to make sure there's nothing stuck down in the cracks except the waxy glue, which can dissolve that. We get our little flame. If we hold it like this, the center will get different heat than the edges and the edges will crack. If we hold it so half of it's touching from here to the top, and think of it as like toasting a marshmallow so the face gets nice and golden brown but the edge doesn't catch on fire. You just sit here and do this till the wax starts to get liquid at the edges. We slide it off, we flip it over carefully, we heat the wax, we squish a little dot in the middle, make sure we got plenty, then we wait for this one to cool down. So you always do the back first. We always do the back first. It is the biggest spot, so if everything else angles away from it, as long as it doesn't go through the stencil, we have room. On a stick, they do the back. This takes another four or five minutes. This is our shiny side. This is our uh, ugly side. That's a line I drew around at our halfway point. We go right down to the line. Give or take halfway. Now I'm realizing I use way too much water when I'm doing stuff. So now we that. have a don't go past line we have this we could paint this but we're just going to use the glue as our reference point we hold it straight in this is the center line this is a little below the center line don't tip it this way or this way just hold it straight in and grind you want one flat little smiley face right down to the don't go past line One smiley face right here. Two smiley faces. Two smiley face kids roughly across from each other. We want to get rid of this ridge and this ridge. We put it in the middle. We only grind to the top because that's the only place you can see where to stop. Anything from the middle to the don't go past line, 
stopping just before it. Leaves you a little tongue sticking out. This is the ridge we're trying to get rid of and match this side. Do one or two passes across the whole thing just to make sure your arch is good. For beginners, paint helps at this point. Do not paint the sidewalk area of your little park. So we have this painted. I painted here and here, but not here. We do the same thing. One little set of powder lips. Two little sets of powder lips. We don't go past this line, we just slightly rock it. See how little I'm rocking this? This makes us a little bit bigger each time. Eventually, if you do it perfectly, you get a very perfect X. It doesn't have to be this perfect. As with the other one, it could be one way or the other, it's fine. It's just so that it arches from both directions. We take the corners out. Right down to the don't go past line. If it's a hard rock, you might take extra corners out. Give that star a few extra rays. Go around it, scroll it, get rid of any lumps look about like this. We switch to the next wheel. We hold it like this. This is too straight. This is too much. This is about right. Keep that angle. Grind all the way to the bottom of your rock. You know it's too big because you made it too big. When you no longer have any of the scratchy stuff left on the side, you test it against your stencil and look for where it's touching. I'm going to have to make a mistake so you can see that. So if you look, you'll see where there's touching spot here on this side of the line. Right here and light on either side of it. Wherever you see it touching, grind. Wherever you see it's not touching, don't grind. If you don't go into the light, you're not dead yet. So the stencil gives you that exact Right. shape so that it's There's the a standard. Little trick. There's a little trick. If you have a metal stencil or something you can put a little grease pencil on and you rub it in here back and forth everywhere it's touching will have an aluminum rub mark. Those are the high spots touching your rock into the stencil. So we go right there Each time we do this, it gets a little better and a little deeper. You can look at it from both sides. Use that light gap to tell you how good you, you're getting. So I should have only a trace of light right here at the top. That means I've got to do everything else all the way around. So this is where it's touching, I pass that. I go all the way around the rock and stop where it was touching. This slowly gets rid of the light gap 
and seats it deeper and deeper in the stencil. Okay, so see how deep I am? Maybe just a little more. It's a hard rock. So now we're going to reduce this by half. You can draw a line. I'm just going to say what is roughly half of this. If you're having a hard time seeing how high your line is, if you get a piece of aluminum and you drag it along there, you can see your lines. So I have a get rid of ridge and a don't go past line. So this is what I need to get rid of. I start from the center or rub right down it. If you're looking down between the wheel and where you've done it and where you haven't, you can see the lump. Get rid of it from one direction all the way around, then go back over from another direction. It evens it out a little. Gets anything you might have missed. This is where painting it helps beginners. If you look at this one, you will see flat spots and imperfections. They stand out. You can see little corners, little flat spots. We want to go over this and get rid of all those. Again, a very light pressure. Little teeny tracks. The smaller the track, the rounder the stone. If you see dark spots, you need to keep going over the whole stove. If you see imperfections, you may need to go back over those and lower it below them or fill them up with something. A little super glue and baking powder. If you like a hollow spot, like it's got crystals in it, fill it up with the super glue and baking powder. After you polish the rock, it's all bad out in acetone, acetone, and that will leave the crystal without polish stuck between them, which is a little hard to get rid of. So now I have something like this. I move to the next wheel. I go around here. Now if you've got too much wax on your on your project, just take some of it off right there. Don't let the wax deceive you when you're putting it in the stencil. It can go through on a larger rock here because the next step should take very little off. This one is so close to going through, I actually need to take a little more off. And I find that if I go all the way around it, I always give the sides an extra sweep or two, identical, so that it stays the same. Because the sides take longer to grind than the ends. If I tip this, it goes through. You can paint the side to see the little line. If you actually let it dry, it doesn't wash away.
So, if you're not sure where your line is, rub your little aluminum thing against it and see where your lowest spot is. I say my lowest spot is right here. I'm going to make everything this thick to the bottom of my rock. I just hold it like this, let it stretch a little, make that a nice even height all to that new level. So this is my new don't go pass line. There's a little bit of a frostiness up here and a little less frosty here. We want to make the whole thing the same. Don't push hard. That does not do a better job. Inspect the dome. Make sure there's no flat spots in the middle. Dry it off. Look for cracks and imperfections. Look for kinks in the light. So if you saw a kink like here in our don't go past line up here, you would want to get rid of that. When you like it, my theory is go over it one or two more times just for good measure. Make sure it's perfect. Now on a very large rock, we might start rolling that line out, but on this size rock, we get rid of all the purple, get rid of all the stuff. We make it go through our stencil. If it's taking too long, there's no law that says you can't go back a step. One rock within the width of a human hair of being the exact size, we're close enough. That's within calibrated to standard size ranges. We want to roll that little edge over so that quick dangle pass line is now rounded. So now this area is done. All I have to do is the top. Dry it off and inspect it for imperfections. Double check your don't go past line. It should round and be almost invisible. When you like it, do everything one more time. Move on. This will not change the size of this rock if I went around it 500 times. It's too hard a rock. It's only changing how frosty it looks. Dry it off and inspect for areas that are less frosty and more frosty. I see a little bit of frostiness here and a little bit here. So this wheel is more of a polishing. This is a pre-polish. Yeah, pre-polish. Looks like you, you've constructed a piece of uh, furniture. You've sanded it with the coarse one. These are all just fine sanding. You're not really taking a lot off. This is the last one. You can really change the size of anything but the smallest of rocks. So this is the finish I have right now. It's not bad, but it's not great. We do this one, it's only slightly better.
Now on a very hard rock, you have to do all of these steps, and you might even add a step with a little bit of diamond paste in the middle of your leather pad. Dry it off, it looks just slightly better. We get our leather wet. Don't stand where it's going to flick you. Yeah, I've done that too many times. Get some polish. This is plenty. I tend to start with my sides. Make sure you dry your sides off and inspect them. See if they're shiny everywhere. And you use the other end for the softer rocks rather than this we leather one. We also use it here. You can use it here too, okay. No, we use it here to clean it out. All right, okay. So this is the finish. So this is the finish we have now. Very bright. We come over here. Now this stone has little pits and holes in it. We could fill those with super glue and come back, sand it again at the 600 and hide those, or we can just leave them. If we go like this, and we apply a polishing compound to it. If it's the right color, we leave it. If it's too ugly, this will dissolve off in alcohol. This would leave only the hole itself with whatever little crystalline pockets there is. Which are interesting sometimes. If we polish really heavily on things that have variation in hardness, we can get what's called undercutting. Undercutting is like what you see in a dinosaur bone. The cell patterns undercut, whereas the crystalline hollow spots tend to be a little more durable and look like a cobblestone. This is the finish we have. Gorgeous. This stone, you can see the gold flecks here. That's beautiful stuff. Nice. It's a very pretty piece of yeah. plume agate. Get it off, we just stick it in the freezer and it'll pop off. Oh, yeah. Any residue of wax you can dissolve off in alcohol. And that's how we do that. Awesome. Thank you very I think much, I Ben. Covered everything. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.